In this video, we're going to talk about uh, temperature sensors, and uh, I wanted to clarify that there are a lot of different kinds of temperature sensors, but the, the most arguably basic and commonly used for a mechanical designer is something called a thermocouple. So here's, here's a picture of uh, the thermocouple attached to a, uh, a, a thermometer, a digital thermometer. Um, the, uh, here's, here's a better, here, a picture right here. That's the thermocouple itself. It's basically a long cord that's often wrapped in um, a, uh, a, a, like a, a heat shielding material. Um, and then the, the end of which is, is exposed. So, you know, in the center of the screen right here, you can see a little metal wire, and that's the exposed portion that uh, is actually used for direct contact with whatever you're trying to, to measure. So, um, uh, I don't mean to infer that this is the only type of temperature sensor out there. There are certainly many others, but um, they begin to get a little bit more uh, complicated to use and to integrate into your you know your design uh, so for this lesson we're just concentrating on, on this one right here which is called again a thermocouple and it's really easy to use you just plug it into your uh, your, your digital meter here like this this fluke meter that's that's shown here and then you approximate the uh, exposed wire at the tip to whatever you're trying to measure the temperature of uh, so having said that let's go down here to our questions um, Raf had asked uh, question 3b uh, here at the bottom of the page. Uh, so one of the real world examples that we listed here is uh, setting a cleaning bath temperature, for example, to clean medical devices or other products to a precise level. By level, I should have said temperature. Um, so uh, Raf asked what exactly I meant by that, and just a, a little bit of background. We we do a lot of work. Uh, with, with medical, here we go, Raf changing it on the fly, excellent. Uh, we do a lot of work with medical devices and um, sometimes when cleaning a medical device, you'll put it into uh, an, an ultrasonic bath. So here's just a rough example. This is you know one ultrasonic bath. There are a lot of them out there that you can purchase, but it's basically a stainless steel tube that you can see kind of in the center there. And then there are ultrasonic vibrations that this uh, machine generates that propagate through the, the bath inside that stainless steel tub. Um, it's often just water in there. Sometimes there will be some kind of cleaning solution as well. But these ultrasonic vibrations uh, serve to uh, clean the, the instrument that you're dealing with. And it certainly doesn't have to be just medical devices. These are used for uh, any kind of instrument or, or device that can be placed in water and needs to be delicately cleaned. Uh, so sometimes when you're using these, you want the, 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 the bath temperature to be uh, very specific, uh, especially if you're dealing with like a really delicate medical device. Uh, you don't want to overheat it. Um, and so uh, you might want your bath temperature to be, you know, at a really specific temperature. So for something like this, you could simply stick the end of that thermocouple into the, 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 the liquid in the bath and um, take a temperature reading. Uh, and then often on these instruments, there will be um, uh, dials to increase the temperature or reduce the temperature. And so you could dial it into just the right temperature by uh, aiding uh, the process with a, a thermocouple. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. All right, back to the questions. <clears throat> uh, do you always need both the thermocouple plugged into the thermometer in order to measure temperature? Or can you just use the thermometer alone with no thermocouple plugged in? It's a really good question. Um, this setup always requires both used in conjunction. The, uh, the thermocouple itself is the probe that is directly contacted to whatever you're trying to measure the temperature of and the, the meter, so <clears throat> the big yellow um, device that you see kind of on the left of this picture, that is the brains behind the thermocouple. The thermocouple itself can't really do anything. It's basically just a dumb wire. And the, the meter or the thermometer, that's where the brains are, right? All the circuitry, um, uh, the, the, the intelligence that knows how to interpret an electrical signal and spit out uh, a temperature value that, that you can then use. And so um, you always have to use them together. They don't, they don't really work 
separately. <clears throat> uh, does one need to calibrate a thermometer and thermocouple of the style shown above? Um, you want to take a guess at that, Raf? Uh, my answer would be no, because it'll be very hard for us to know, for us to predetermine what the temperature of a certain object is before we use the thermometer to measure it. That's right. Yep. These uh, these style come pre-calibrated, so it's really easy to use. You just plug the thermocouple into the thermometer, and you're you're set to go. Uh, some of the more uh, sophisticated and, and complicated styles do require some calibration and that's why we, we're really not going to get into that because it, it gets into more niche um, styles of, of product development and we're just kind of keeping it pretty basic for these lessons. What's, for instance, just to have a, a big idea, just to educate myself a little broader, what would be a niche that does use a more specific thermometer? Usually when you're talking about integration, so the, the setup here with a, a thermometer and a thermocouple, that's really good for general purpose use. Like if you're in a lab setting and you just need to quickly measure something, that's, that's the perfect instrument for it. But if you're integrating a system, for example, um, let's say that uh, you need to have a bath through which a continuous uh, current of fluid is, is circulating. And um, so here, let's maybe let's draw this out. <clears throat> okay, so let's say that you've got, you've got a tank right here. And that tank is filled with water. And then uh, you've got, um, let's see, you've got a, a, a pump right here. And that pump is pushing water in over there. And then let's say that you've got uh, like a, a drain over here. And this drain connects to uh, another, another tank. And in this tank, you have a, a thermal element on the bottom that's heating up water in there. And then from that tank, it, it feeds into this pump. So you've got water flowing from this, this heated tank into the pump and then into this, this bath here. Let's say this bath is your, your functional bath and maybe you've got, I don't know, you've got some kind of device. That's, that yellow blob represents some kind of device. Maybe you're cleaning it, I don't know. Um, and, then, and then the water flows back down to this drain and back into the, the heating tank. And this device, whatever you're doing with it, let's just say it requires a constant flow of, of water. It's not just stagnant water in there. And we want to keep it at a, a specific temperature. Um, if, if we had just our thermocouple, so we had, uh, uh, what do we want to use here? Maybe a, a brown, how about that? We have a, a thermocouple that we could stick in there, right? And then we've got our, our meter out here that you know reads the display. <clears throat> this would not be uh, an, an integrated solution because you're reading the temperature, but but you're not doing, uh, the system can't uh, modify its behavior based on that readout. Whereas if we had a truly integrated uh, thermal sensor in here, I'll just draw something else. Let's say this little square down here is another uh, heat sensor. And, and that heat sensor had some controls that went back to our, um, our heating elements over here. Now we have an, an integrated system where uh, this this uh, heat sensor here in our, our functional bath is going to measure a temperature. It's going to send that temperature back to our heating element down here and say, okay, we're not quite high enough temperature. We need you to uh, put out some more energy and, and increase the temperature of that water as it flows into this functional bath. Um, <clears throat> you couldn't do that with, with a thermocouple because they're just not set up to work like that. There's not there's not like an output that you could plug into uh, your, your, your thermal, your heating pads down here on the bottom. Um, whereas more of an integrated approach, a different type of heat sensor, you could, uh, you could integrate it like that. Does that make sense? I'm getting close to the answer, but what is the main difference between these two thermometers then? Um, really, it's uh, size and configuration. So 
the the style that you would integrate is is typically smaller. It doesn't have all of, of the brains that you would have in, in the meter right there because it doesn't need it. Um, and so it, it's a it's a smaller um, sensor and and it has an output that can be accepted by um, the input of another device and the input of another device in this case I'd be referring to this um, uh, this this uh, uh, heating element down here so this heating element would have some kind of receptacle and you would plug the the output of the uh, integrated heat sensor into the receptacle of the, the heating element whereas that kind of output doesn't exist on on the uh, uh, the thermometer and the thermocouple. Uh, I still really don't understand it, but yeah, I don't understand why it's plugged in at both places. The, the um, so it, it it's not really plugged in right right here. Um, it, it's this is just like in the functional bath up here where I'm circling. That would just be the sensor. That's where the sensor rests. It's like installed right there. So it's just in, in the bath uh, receiving the, the temperature of the water. And then down at, at this end where I'm circling now here, that's where it would be plugged in to your, uh, your heating element. So it's telling my heating element. First of all, I don't even know what a heating, heating element really means. It, it's familiar. just, we don't need to know exactly what it means. It's just something that produces heat. Okay, got it. So this is telling the heating elements how much heat to produce? Exactly. Okay, I understand now. And this is all automatic? That's right. When it's integrated, oh. it's all it's, it's done you know, in real time automatically. Whereas if we went with this approach on the top here, you could take a, a temperature reading, but the system wouldn't react based on that temperature. You would have to you know, manually go in and turn a knob somewhere and increase the temperature or reduce the temperature or something like that. Okay, now it's very clear. And you're saying that for, excuse me, for option A is what we're learning right now. Yep. Option A, but for B, this is something that we really don't need to learn now. We're just having a big overview of what the other more niche specific thermometers would do, right? That's, that's right, yep, exactly. Okay, wonderful, thanks. Okay. All right. Let's go back to our questions. Let's see, why is the thermocouple so long? Why can't it be the, a short component similar to a, a cooking oven thermometer? I don't know what a cooking oven thermometer looks like. Cooking oven thermometer, you ever seen uh, something stuck into a turkey? Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, we just had Thanksgiving, <laughs> timely, okay. yeah. Uh, so that's just, you know, it's like four or six inches, something like that. So why is the thermocouple so long? Um, I would say because a very a high temperature item or place, uh, you, you may not want to put the, what, what is it called, the thermometer close to that because it may damage it. Therefore, you need a longer cable, which is the thermocouple, so that you can distance it from the high temperature place. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great point right there. And the the sheathing that is around the thermocouple wire, so this you know this braided sheathing right there, that's often a really high temperature material. Like um, I think maybe Kevlar is used sometimes, uh, but it's really high temperature, and so you know it, it's not gonna it's not gonna melt uh, before you know some fairly high temperature. Uh, and another reason it's so long is that uh, thermocouples are really for pretty general use and so to be as versatile as possible you have this long length that you can you know route through different things and you know uh, just get it to the point where where it needs to be if you have need for a, a longer length so that that's a just a kind of a practical reason so a question for you have you ever needed a longer length for the thermocoupler or this is sufficient um, let's see, they sell them in different lengths. This one looks like it's, I don't know, maybe two feet or something, but y you can buy them in, uh, I don't know, two foot, four foot, six foot lengths, something like that. And the, the longest one I can think of that I've used is probably, oh, I think we needed about three feet of functional length for it. Yeah. 
But there are certainly applications where you might want it to be longer. Maybe you need to reach into something deep. And the only distant, the only reason why you needed three feet of thermocoupler was because the temperature was very hot or you needed to reach something far away. In the case I'm thinking of, we, we just needed to reach something that was far away. But uh, a system being really hot and not wanting to place the, the brain of this, right, the thermometer itself, right next to something really hot, that's also a very valid reason. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, let's see, why is the end of a thermocouple bare wire instead of something solid that looks more finished? I would say wire is a better temperature conductor. Right, yep. Yeah, you, you want to be able to directly approximate that wire to whatever you're measuring without having any kind of insulative barrier between it. No further questions. All right, that's it. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.